Yes guys, welcome back to another video on the channel today. Today, I feel like I'm saying this every time I record a video, but it has been a while since I've last recorded. I've been busy with mock exams in school, I've been busy with coursework. I've just been a very, very busy person over January. You know, it's probably the worst time of the year to be busy because a lot has happened with Rex AFC regarding the transfer window, players leaving, players joining. We've had a multi-million pound move at Rex AFC, and of course, it's been a busy schedule in terms of FA Cup and league games but finally today i am back and i'm going to be talking about all those things i have just mentioned this is going to be a big big video because i'm going to have my say on the signings the departures of course this big move that has happened with rex moc regarding a big global event and of course previewing our game on the weekend so before we get going in today's video make sure to drop a like let's go for 400 likes on today's video make sure to get down there click the red subscribe button we are on the road to 21,000 subscribers if you're new if you're a Wrexham fan watching this this is the place to be for Rex Mosey content, news, etc., match reviews. So get down there and click the red subscribe button. So, without further ado, let's get reviewing our first signing of deadline day. It was Luke Bolton from Salford City, like I said, undisclosed fee. He was our first signing. Now, Luke Bolton arrives to add competition down that right-hand side. With Anthony Ford not being included in the 23-man squad for the second half of the season, this definitely does make sense for Luke Bolton to sign for Wrexham AFC. Of course, that only leaves us with really two natural right wing-backs, Ryan Barnett and Luke Bolton. So, I think it was important that we added cover down that right-hand side. And, of course, Luke Bolton has come in, one of the best players on the right-hand side in League 2. And we have been able to get him right or the last minute on deadline day. Now Luke Bolton is a very unique player when it comes to playing down that right hand side. Like I said he's very very versatile, he's great going forward, very effective. We've seen clips of him that Rex Mosey did post and he loves that cut inside on his left foot to shoot. Something that we don't really see our wing backs do very often so it will be interesting to see if he does carry that trait over in a Rex Mosey shirt. When it comes to defending he's very very good at defending as well but in his youth days at Manchester City he did start off as a right back and like I said down that right hand side he's quick he's dynamic on the ball it's something that excites me is his ability to cut inside and score goals on his weaker foot so this is a sign in that overall just really really excites me of course he adds competition to Ryan Barnett it'll be good to see those two go toe to toe to see who starts in the starting 11 and of course we've got two of the best right wing backs in the league now and it's ridiculous because Bolton good going forward, Barnett good going forward, they're both good at defending, they're both good at dribbling, putting crosses in the box, you know, this is a very, very good signing and a good signing for the long term because, you know, Luke Bolton, 24 years old, Ryan Barnett, a similar age, so... You know, we've got those two for the long term and they can only continue to impress in a Rex Mosey shirt and be with us for the long term project. I've touched upon it in a recent video but Luke Bolton was a key, key player last year for Salford City in their playoff campaign in League 2, racking up 16 goals and assists playing every game in League 2, 3.27 crosses per 90, 1.19 key passes per 90 and 3.32 dribbles per 90 minutes like I said this reminds me a lot of our current right wing back Ryan Barnett very attacking minded can put a good cross in and can play a key role in our attacking phase as well as our defensive area definitely a very exciting bit of business done by Phil Parkinson on deadline day let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below how would you rank this sign out of 10 for me it's got to be a solid 9 out of 10 you've got to think of the long term what he can offer his current stats as well he's coming off a really really good season and a half at Salford City so we're signing him when he's in the peak of his form of course he's got years ahead of him and hopefully he can be in it for the long term another one of our January signings Jack Marriott our second deadline day signing of course the striker from Fleetwood Town and finally what most Rex Mercy fans had been wishing for a striker we got it across the line and Jack Marriott is our second deadline day signing and our second and final signing of the January transfer window now Marriott joins us off a very strange season at Fleetwood Town he started off playing 21 games scored five goals was doing quite well for Fleetwood Town and of course made that decision that he wanted to leave Fleetwood Town disincluded himself from the match day squad and then of course he's got his January move to Rexmo C a new project that I'm sure Jack Marriott will be hungry to achieve in 
and of course play a big role in. Like I said, this is the same with Luke Bolton. You know, we can't really make a real judgment of what these two are going to be like for Rex Mosey, but we can get a good indication by looking at their stats and their previous performances for their clubs. They both did come on against Salford City, but we only saw at least half an hour of them, so we can't make a real judgment yet. But from looking at Marriott's history, you know, he scored goals for Peterborough, he scored goals for Derby. He is a good striker. He's experienced in the higher leagues of English football and he's got that goal scoring ability. And Wrexham is that challenge for him and let's hope we can unlock that confidence that he had when scoring goals in the championship at the top end of League One. Now last season, Marriott did record 15 goals and four assists in all competitions for Fleetwood Town. And prior to that, in the 21-22 season, he netted nine times in 30 games in the championship for Peterborough United. So he knows where the back of the net is. He can do it in the championship. He can do it in League One. And we've seen Peterborough United as well. So like 27 goals in 44 games is a ridiculous start in League One. And hopefully we can unlock that goal scoring ability. You know, I think it's fair to say that Marriott hasn't really had that challenge that has excited him, that challenge that he's wanted to excel in. And I think Wrexham and Phil Parkinson especially can get the best out of Jack Marriott. And I think this is an interesting point to point out now. I was talking to a fleet a town fan and they said that Jack Marriott did have a bad attitude which shocked me because we've seen the history of Phil Parkinson and players that have bad attitudes and ones that are going to affect the group Cameron Green, Dan Jarvis they've been given the boot at the end of the season and Phil Parkinson does not want those type of players in the dressing room but clearly he sees that Jack Marriott can be a valuable asset to the squad so yeah I'm happy with the signing of Jack Marriott 100% and it's always good to boost our options up top and hopefully he can play a big role for us as we look to to get promotion to League One this season. And now we're going to be talking about the departures at Wrexham AFC. The first one being Bryce Hassan. And now Hassan did leave Wrexham AFC on deadline day after leaving the club by mutual consent. And he spent no time at all in finding a new club. One hour 30 up the road at National League side AFC filed. Now Hassan had made 46 appearances in a Wrexham AFC shirt and I think it could have been a hell of a lot more if he'd have been able to have stayed fit and injuries wouldn't have played a part in his career at Wrexham AFC. For me, Hassan was really, really exciting down that right-hand side. He came from Leeds United with loads of potential, loads of hype around him and of course injuries just played his career down at Wrexham AFC and like I said, there were stints where he was in the team and I thought he looks really, really exciting and he could be our right wing back for many, many years to come but like I said, injuries have just got the better of him which is very, very unfortunate because if you can keep Bryce Asana fit in a team, he will succeed and he would do a job for any League Two side, by far any National League side as well. On his day, he can be a very, very good player down that right-hand side. He's quick, he's agile, and it's just a shame that his career went how it went at Wrexham AFC, but I'm sure we wish him all the best of luck at AFC Fylde. Liam McAlinden was the second one through the door in the January transfer window. This was quite a sad moment because McAlinden leaves after being our first signing properly under Phil Parkinson and really under the takeover. Now, he leaves after two and a half years at the club. He was always there when we needed him. You know, he wouldn't mind slotting and then a right wing back, left wing back, centre attack midfielder in the USA tour. You know, he would do a job for us and you could guarantee that he would, you know, put 100% in whenever he did play. I think in 2023, the calendar year, with the signings of multiple wing backs and of course in the January transfer window, of Luke Bolton. I think it was clear that game time for McAlinden was going to be very, very limited. McAlinden does leave with a promotion under his belt, 64 games played in a Rex May FC shirt, and of course, like Asana, we wish him all the best of luck in his new chapter. And the third and final player to leave Rex May FC in the transfer window, Jake Bickerstaff. Now, Bickerstaff made the deadline day switch to fellow League Two side Accrington Stanley on loan. I think this will be a move that is very beneficial to Bickerstaff because, you know, he's seeking regular game time at a football club. And for me, we saw the rumours of Oldham Athletic wanting him in this summer. That would have been a good move for him. He'd have been guaranteed game time. But to get him a lone move to a League Two side where, you know, he started the first game against Grimsby Town. So hopefully he can play consistently in League Two, the league that Wrexham FC, of course, are currently in. There's no better place to do it than a team that is currently chasing playoffs in League Two. Now, we've seen really promising signs of Bickerstaff over the years at Wrexham have seen of course all he wants to do is get regular game time he had that at the start of the year when Mullen was out injured and I think he took his chance really really well he scored some good goals he played a really good role in the side and of course let's hope he can excel on the pitch for Accrington Stanley so yeah that is it for January transfer news talk next we're going to be talking about the multi-million pound move for Wrexham AFC 
Wrexham AFC will be featuring in a Super Bowl advert this Sunday where the Chiefs play the 49ers in LA. Yes, you've heard that right. Wrexham AFC will be featuring in a Super Bowl advert this Sunday. It really does feel like we're living in a simulation at times. It's never normal being a Wrexham AFC fan post takeover. Pre-takeover, we were excited by signing a player as a free agent or seeing, you know, players out in a Wrexham AFC shirt as trialists in pre-season against Bangor City. Those are the type of things that we got excited about pre-takeover. Post-takeover, we're getting excited about being in a Super Bowl advert. How times have changed being a Wrexham AFC fan. Like I said, you don't get one normal day of supporting Wrexham. Actor Anthony Hopkins will transform into Rex the Dragon for the advert, with it being, of course, a collaboration with Stoke Cold Brew and Wrexham AFC. We've seen the trailer on Twitter, so yeah, be sure to look out for the advert on the Super Bowl on Sunday night. Now, to put it into context, a Super Bowl advert for 2023 cost $7 million. If you work that out per second, that is $233 thousand dollars per second and yes Rex AFC are going to be featuring on I think it might be a 30 second it might even be a minute I'm sure they'll probably trim it down to 30 seconds but Rex AFC will be featuring which like I said is absolutely ridiculous now Rob and Ryan really are taking us onto the global scale like they did say when they first took over they wanted to put Wrexham on the map and they've done exactly that we've also seen that in 2023 Rex AFC were the 84th most watched football team in the USA ridiculous beating the likes of New York Red Bulls Orlando City teams that play in America you know it's absolutely crazy they're like I said they really are putting us on the map and they really are taking Wrexham AFC onto the global scale which I'll never be thankful enough for and of course it marks their three-year anniversary today of Wrexham AFC three years ago I was sat in this exact place talking about how Rob and Ryan had taken over Wrexham and their plans for the future and three years later here we are with a Super Bowl advert so yeah moving on to our game on Saturday at home to Bradford City we're finally back at the race course ground at what seems like an age I think it's like nearly a month since we last played at the race course that 2-0 win over AFC Wimbledon this Saturday we face Bradford City who currently sit 18th in League 2 in what could be a very important game in the promotion race for Wrexham AFC and I think it's fair to say it's been a rocky spell since that last home game against AFC Wimbledon three games three defeats now I'm sure the players are eager to put the wrong right and this is a massive, massive opportunity to jump back into the automatics. It's very close up there. It is so, so close. There's not one week where someone sort of storms away and goes five, six points clear in the top three. Every week, a team seems to lose and then the other teams around them seem to lose. You know, no one seems to want to win games recently. So this is a big chance. And if we're talking team news, of course, we've got Super Stephen Fletcher back. He made his return against Salford City. Now, there might be a possibility that one of the two signings might might feature in the starting 11. I'd say there's more chance of Marriott starting than Luke Bolton. But I think the chance of this happening are probably around 50%. It's 50-50 whether they'll play. And it'll be interesting to see the situation, of course, with Oli Palmer. We saw he didn't start against Salford City. And the last game that Palmer did start was on the 28th of November away at Harrogate Town. You know my opinions on Oli Palmer. You know that I think he's had an incredible season and he's such a good player. But recently, it seems like Dolby's got the nod ahead of Palmer. And, you know, last year it seemed to be the other way around. Palmer would start and Dolby would be that impact sub. But, you know, Palmer's not featured a hell of a lot and has not started a game, like I said, in nearly two and a half months. So it will be interesting to see what the situation around Palmer is come Saturday. And if we're talking about our opponents, Bradford City, they'll be without the league's third top scorer, Jake Young, as he suffered an ankle injury last weekend against Wimbledon. So, yeah, that'll be a big miss for them. Likewise with Tyreek Wright, he won't be available for the Bantam. So from my point of view, I don't want to get too confident, too cocky. I think this is a massive, massive opportunity to get three points. They're on a rocky spell like we are recently, but they're on a long-term rocky spell. You know, they haven't won a game since the 22nd of December, nine games ago. They're winless in eight league games in League Two. So we should be aiming for a win. But Bradford, you know, they've got a good manager, they've got a good fan base behind them, they've got a good squad, but something just doesn't seem to be clicking and they've gone from possibly, you know, fighting for a playoff spot like they were last season to scrambling at the bottom end of the table. So, you know, they're a massive, massive club to be where they are. But if we're talking about Wrexham, we should be looking at getting three points tomorrow and this would hopefully start the start of a good run. That is it for today's video. Let me know what you think of our January transfer window. What do you think the score will be at home to Bradford City tomorrow? And of course, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff and I'll see you in another video 
Take care, guys. Up the town.